Round two of the Core TCG LA Regionals here. This is between Sabo and Enel, if you didn't see by the thumbnail and the title. Now, before we get into it, as the Sabo player is going first and going into his one done turn, just want to clarify, I do not own the rights to this content. This stream was streamed on Eggman's YouTube and Twitch channels. This is the Core TCG official stream. I have no affiliation. I'm just doing my own unique commentary extra on it and there's no revenue that's going to be added into this video. Um, there's no monetization or anything. So just want to make that abundantly clear. If you want the official VOD and stuff to watch, you can check out the description below. But going into Sabo's first turn, they play a Nami turn one, an excellent turn one card going first for the Sabo deck. Gonna look at the top five cards, find a straw hat, and find Roranora Zoro. So this is a pretty good card to find, especially when you want to play it on your second turn as well. It's a little tough to protect uh, second turn going first, but I think the Sabo player can manage. The Enel player, though, grabbing a Shura first. The last round we actually showcased an Enel and Katakuri, and there were no Shuras really to be found until late game. So picking up a Holly off that one, that'll be really good if they have an Ohm in their hand to play next turn. But Sabo going into their 7 Dawn turn, just instead of placing down the Zoro, maybe valuing, keeping that alive a little bit more, decides to swing 7 at life. So swing 7 now at 3 life left. And a Tony Tony Chopper blocker comes down on the field. That's not something that we usually see in Sabo decks, at least what we saw in Japan and in early versions. So this could have a little bit of cooking spice up in it. And uh, Enel going into the 4 Dawn turn is going to take a life right there, swinging 5 at leader and just really going to raw play the Holly at this point. So Leaving one Dawn open, now the five Dawn turn for Sabo. you got to expect that Zoro to come down and swing, I would assume. It looks like they've got some other stuff in their hand. The Hina blocker, Otama, a couple different things and counter power that they can use. But going to do a little bit of poke damage with the 6k swing. Going to try to force out a 2k or two 1k counter cards against the Eno player. And they're just going to take the life right here and it looks like there is potentially a trigger looking at their hand it seems like it might be a something like a satori or something where you know you trash a card in order to play the card off trigger and it is exactly that satori coming down it looks like they're thinking about trashing a yamato i think by the looks of it it's a little hard to tell from this angle they've got a couple other cards in hand i think like seven total cards so a pretty healthy hand size i will say for the enel player so thinking about i think yamato and satori and it's going to be trashing a charlotte brulee actually a regional championship promo brulee and so Sabo going to be putting down the Zoro with the leftover Dawn. One Dawn, they are going to swing. So 6k swing into Enel, easy 2k counter with Satori. And now Satori has the ride right now going into 6 Dawn in this turn. So definitely if they've got an Ohm, I would be interested to see if they play that or potentially another Shura to just go find more Sky Island cards. I think that Enel swung at Roranora Zoro, and I think this Holly is too. So the Sabo player really trying to opt to keep this Zoro alive or use as many resources as possible to swing into it using the leader effect on that time. Remember, Sabo's leader effect, opponent's turn times one dawn once per turn if you're a uh, character's power of 5,000 or more would to be KO'd, you can instead give it minus 1,000 power. So just pulling out all the stops for this Zoro, going to be countering a couple times, especially off the Shura swing with that 2k Otama counter at 4,000 power, and uh, also using the Tony Tony Chopper blocker that they put down last turn. So a very interesting side of events especially with the tony tony chopper block i think 
that's like a really, really cool thing because especially in the early turns, I feel like in One Piece, your three dawn turn is actually really weird because like you throw together an unprotected Zoro with leader effect, but maybe just kind of relaxing and waiting a little bit is the favor in this Sabo build. Maybe something to try after watching this. Now, seven dawn turn coming in for the Sabo after Enel finish their turn, putting down another Holly raw so just big board right now three 5k power bodies and then also Ashura that can be doing some swinging but Nami is going to take care of that with 2k on 2k violence at this point just kind of clearing the board a little bit very very nice for these you know smaller attackers to just pick apart the smaller ones that were powered up last turn for the opposing player now going to be swinging six and I believe that was at Enel. It could have been at Holly. But either way, it's a 2k counter out of it. And Zoro now doing it as well. Zoro swinging into the Holly. Just trying to clear board right now as best as possible. So I think this is a 5 Dawn. So it looks like it's going to be a Monkey Day Luffy 6k swing into Satori. So the Enel player says, yeah, you could take that as well. And now from three characters to one on their side of the field, we'll see exactly how they go into their 8 Dawn turn. Now 8 Dawn activates the Katakuri 8 drop. If they do want to do that, could put literally any character on the field at this point, whether it's theirs or yours. And just going to start off with a 5k swing at the Zoro, maybe trying to bait that Sabo leader effect as soon as possible, and that's exactly what he does. So swinging in now that Holly swing into Zoro, and I think that's probably fine. Oh my gosh, and after knocking out that Zoro, you know, the opponent saying, you know what, I've got one more uh, rush attacker in there. The 8-drop Katakuri does come down, put that uh, Monkey Day Luffy in life, that pretty aggressive attacker. So... On one hand, you're fine with it because you've got another Monkey Day Luffy in your hand. And also, it looks like Hina Blocker, Otama, um, the Tendrop Rush Luffy, which is very, very nice. I've been playing one of those in my deck as well, but can't play it on the 9-drop turn. Uh, this is the 9-dawn turn for the Sabo player. Not really seeing any blockers at this point to play whether that's Borsalino you're seeing one Hina they do have a Rush Zoro in there another one of those three drops the pesky little dudes but start off with a 6k swing at the Holly and now dropping three dong gonna be dropping down that Zoro as well swinging presumably at life because that's the only place where they can swing they can also drop the five drop Luffy this same turn as well but I think that there's a pretty good chance that one of them is going to be knocked out through the uh, through the Katakuri and so the five drop Hina comes down instead and to be honest like I'm not as big of a fan of high five drop Hina as much as I thought I was to start mostly because I feel like by the time you're playing the five drop Hina it just gets take taken out like exactly like this um just multiple threats going in on it that nine drop yamato coming down now using leader effect to save the hina because the hina is at 6000 power 6000 base power the on block effect isn't going to be affecting any of the characters on enel's side so i think he can just choose to swing freely at this point and he knows that anytime he swings freely now he's going to have the Sabo player is going to have to counter out of it. So starting out 6k swing there and a, uh, whatchamacallit, an 8k swing at that point. Keeping the Hina alive, I would almost like to have seen Hina go down. I think, uh, I don't know, it's just that they don't have any 6-drop characters on board and the Zoro is just such a great character i mean i guess you could argue that hina is 6k power so it is inherently more valuable at that point but gonna be swinging i think that was 10 or 9 i think it's 9k power into the katakuri just gonna be countering out of that with 
with a 2K and a 1K, I believe that was, Satori and Gidatsu. Going to be thinking now exactly what he wants to do. I think the hand has the Rush Luffy still. So the thing about Enel and what Enel is doing at this point, which is a very good and interesting game plan against Sabo, is really prioritizing clearing board outside of swinging at life. And they're going to put the rest of their dawn on the Hina, and that's going to be swinging into the Katakuri. Really just want to get rid of that character. Um, so that was very interesting. I did not expect that one to come in. But we'll see how Enel plays out. Enel's still having, I think, like a five-card hand. Now in their 10 Dawn turn, two life left. Probably feeling pretty all right, I think, at this point. And Enel's going to start out swinging six on six in terms of into the Hina blocker. And they're immediately going to use leader effects. So that's just going to invite the Yamato potentially to swing right into it. If they do have some stuff that is a Rush Enel 7 drop, that's a pretty good card to have. Especially if you're going to be swinging at that Hina to try to knock it out. And this Yamato is probably going to be swinging at life. Going to be resting 2 Dawn first though and playing the Shura. So the second raw shura to come down and it looks like they're going to be grabbing an ohm so i don't know if they have any hollies in their hand they've already played two but just grabbing a card in general with shura is so good Shura is such a good card in this list especially in combination with you know holly and ohm so this will be really interesting as well because without a monkey day luffy on the field only in hand and in life the uh, Enel player may be able to use the once per turn keep alive effect essentially of the Rush Enel that they played their last turn and take away one of their lives since they do have two life left and not many attacking options are on the board right now. So swinging seven right now, it looks like at Enel just going to be an easy 1k counter the ohm that they immediately picked up out of there just two cards in hand now at this point not a ton but the difference in board state is very heavily swayed at this point so they've got eight dawn left in this turn it looks like they're going to be attaching uh four of them for a 6k swing into leader so going after the life at this point it's going to be another shura off of that trigger that trigger off of the shura just says play the card no trashing a card from the hand effect or anything like that and we'll see what this enel player takes out looks like it's going to be another rush enel so you could probably bet that another rush enel is going to come down on this Sabo's next turn and so they are going to use for Don put down that Borsalino and pass it off to the Enel player it, I'm I don't know I mean with one life left it might be pretty close considering that Sabo still has four life left and they have Rush Luffy in their hand two different Rush Luffy's in their hand so it might be close but I don't know it's it's tough feeling this one out as someone who has only played Sabo so far in the OPO5 meta. Going to start out with a 5k swing at leader and taking that in life. Just trying to build up the card hand, especially after the 7k swing. Takes another life. Now at 2 life left and still a 9k Yamato swing in coming. It's going to be the Borsalino blocker and the leader effect. Now if I was the Enel player, I would be slapping down that 7 drop Enel and Maybe attaching some Dawn to it to swing at the Borsalino. Just so you can get that guy out of the way. It is a 5,000 power, so it does have value to attack. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to swing 9k at the Borsalino, take it out, and just absolutely clear the board on this one. I wonder if they have an L Thor in hand or something like that, because they've left one Dawn open more than once in their turn. So that could be a little telling of the hand. It could just also be like a faint kind of deal. They could be uh, faking that they have something like that in their hand because it is pretty much a radical beam. Try to psych out the Sabo a little bit, but 
Sapo player looking at two radical beams in hand. We know they had the two different rush Luffy's as well. A little bit hard to tell exactly what they've got the rest of the way. And I think you need to find blockers. I don't think the 10 drop Luffy is a good call to put down on the field. They've got three rush Luffy's at this point. So I'm going to be swinging seven into the leader and then activating the leader effect. Once the leader on opponent's turn hits zero life, they can trash a card from their hand to put the top card of their deck into their life. So I think this is the point where you play like the Rush Luffy um, at this point because you don't want to leave just one Dawn left in the NL players in the NL, in the NL players arsenal to trigger and activate the next turn. So they're going to be attaching one Dawn after they slap down that starter deck Rush Luffy and going to be swinging seven at life. And so this is going to hit a trigger. It's going to be a brulee blocker, man. I don't know exactly. I mean, I do know how they can get through this. They leave two Dawn up for the two Radical Beams. If they survive this turn, they do have that unblockable Rush Luffy in their hands. So if there's nothing that can trigger a life in there, I do see a 200 million volts Amaru in this deck that excellent excellent so good event card in my opinion one of the best new yellow cards arguably the best new yellow card to come in op05 just a really really good card and gonna start off swinging 9k with yamato gonna be a radical beam and blocking or countering out with the five drop marco to make it a 10k counter So just going to be thinking about what the next course of operations is to do. They do need to have three swings hit in. And now with only three bodies, really, that can swing, unless you want to use um, Brulee and Shura, the choices are dwindling down at this point. But still all 10 Dons, so an old player is not playing like he's super worried at this point. Got to draw a card, the Sabo player, off of taking that 7k swing at life after blocking the first Enel swing with another Rad Beam. So no Dawn left. Going to have all 10 Dawn here at his disposal. Could be attaching this to the Shura and Brulee. Once again, we know he has the 10 million volts Amaru in hand, so he could be using that as well. That's effectively... Um, that's effectively like plus 1,000 power with a two dawn attachment um, or two dawn use because again you get 3,000 power on a leader or a character and then if a life card is one or less rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less that doesn't apply in this but the 3,000 power does um, could really help out with the math if they swing with Brulee or Shura you could just swing at Shura do some poke damage to try to get it out. And here's some poke damage as well off of the Enel. Swinging six and taking that, you know at least one card in their hand is dead in this four card hand. So gonna be using the 200 million volt Samaru and just swinging five, oh my gosh, swinging all of it on there. And I think this is probably going to get it. And yes, it is only one of their characters having Rush, just the Marco and Wow, really interesting seeing three of potentially four of the Rush Luffy's in that one. That was very, very good to see and really, really great job by that NL player. The Savo player had some good moments too. I don't know if I agreed with everything, but um, I think overall it was a pretty solid game plan. They would have definitely had game next turn if they had somehow survived in that turn. If the NL player maybe had focused on the Rush Luffy trying to KO that instead of going at life. But that's why these players play at these good events, and that's why they excel in them. And thank you so much for watching this uh, unique commentary of the Core TCG Regional VOD hosted by Eggman on their Twitch and YouTube channel. Uh, again, 
Link for that entire VOD is in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll go to round three sometime in the near future. It's Christmas time for anyone watching this video. Pretty soon after it releases, I'm with family. A lot of families come in today and hanging out. So it might be a couple days for me to get some of the other rounds up on the channel. But subscribe if you'd like to eventually see that. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again soon.